The Kaisen J series has a cool art style. Thing is, when it comes to your epic punching genre, I find the art style analyzing is usually about the manga side, Oda or whoever. Not so much the anime, but when it is, it's just the mapper or UFO table art style. As if mapper is a singular entity fused of countless Japanese men and women that makes decisions. So let's peel the lid off the tin, peer inside, and pin some names to the second side of the series, the Jujutsu Kaisen anime. So Tadashi Hiramatsu is the man behind the character designs, and Sayaka Koiso takes over for the most part with season 2, but a little more on the first name. Remember Akira? Well, Akira. Well, that's where you'll find a young Hiramatsu. You've no doubt seen his work just without knowing it. And even though he's not concerned with trying to copy Akatami's style as close as possible, his work still carries that sense of sharpness. And it's that feature for me that makes Jujutsu Kaisen's style stand out. Like, take noses. Strong curve pushing down, uh, then out, then in. A very pointed and defined look. Over 20 years, it... it it hasn't changed. Front on, there's no specific solid shape, say to Dragon Ball or Soul Eater drawn with that oval. Instead, it's just the old nostrils. Imagine like two mini triangles. Like, let's look at Fully Cooly. Here's an episode supervised by another guy, Hiroyuki Amaishi. They curve up. Character sheets, similar thing. Then Hiramatsu, it's again that little hill shape. It's, yeah, it's everywhere. Even in his work for Attack on Titan, yeah, there we are. It's really that simple. Then when tilted up to define the top plane, uh, this part here, we got some vertical hatching, Yuri on Ice, uh, same thing, magical shopping arcade, uh, again. Now the hairstyles, this is a more Akatami thing. He loves his big swoops, like Megami, like <laughs> look at all these, absolutely massive. Or Geto, we, uh, we get a full field with him. Itadori, there you go again. And instead of like big clumps of hair, such as like in Soul Eater or Naruto, which usually base their designs around very simple shapes, there's a, a lot of strands, not even gotta bother counting all these. And Hiramatsu does refine it a fair bit with like cleaner shapes and a, a lot less strands. And in season two, Koiso goes even further in that direction. Now looking at the whole head shape itself, a, a little different, Akatami's is a bit smaller, kinda squashed. In this example, you can see how long the chin is as well as the jaw, which just like goes straight down, uh, not as angled. There's also often a break in the line, more so on the three quarter view, and usually that's filled in with line for the anime, which in turn gives more definition to the face, and with that makes characters look a little older than in the manga. However, what both their work does hold, as mentioned earlier, is that sharpness. And it's particularly what makes Akatami's style instantly identifiable at a glance. Even for female characters, this sort of roughness is present. Like, look at this panel. Big curve here, and straight line for the chin. Kind of masculine, if anything. Whereas a lot of manga cars and animators usually will draw the face much softer for females and are very particular about proportions in an effort to like give that cute appeal. And stuff like hatching is usually left out or kept to a minimum because it can kind of like roughen the image. But Akatami, yeah, he just goes all in. And Hiramatsu, while not as rough, does have that touch as well with his own art, like hatching on the nose and inside the pupil, but most of all that defined look. Of course, his designs are more rounded in comparison. Like, imagine you're cutting something with Akatami's, like a uh, chop, chop, chop. There's, there's straights like everywhere. And with Hiramatsu's, again, it's it's more rounded. Imagine a soft triangle shape, uh, then straight here and here. And again, i drag this out. There it is. And another example. Now, the eyes, a very important feature that can make or break the face. Like, look, we can we can draw those little dot noses, but if those eyes are off, it's over. And here are Matsus, instead of being boxy or small, they're pretty long horizontally, even if the character designs say otherwise. Pupils, fairly detailed. Hatching, not too surprisingly, is added here as well. The shading style is pretty detailed, or was, but st still kind of is. So for season one, uh, the approach was very much about these defined drawings. Like with clothing, there were fairly large and triangular shapes with a bit of hatching to imitate Akatami style. Highlights for hair were also common and it wasn't unusual either to see like two-tone shading applied. Whereas in season two, clothing, the, the highlights aren't removed but are drawn more around the outline with looser and simpler shapes. Same thing for the skin and hair, a, a, a bit more subtle. 
Detailed shading isn't gone either, it's just used sparingly and, and more intentionally. Take these two images, very similar lighting scenarios. The trees are blocking out the main light source, the, the, the sun of course, so the lighting is diffused on both, with exception to some small pockets breaking through. And we can see with Toji, we got all this shading under his neck and around this muscle, the sternomastoid, and some more around the edge of the jaw. Meanwhile with the gojo, it's completely gone. So why the change? What's different? Well, it's the tone. One is in the middle of an intense battle while another is just a casual dialogue scene. We can actually see in the character sheet for Toji there is extra shading added for this more serious shot. Now take this drawing from the first season. Not only is it night time but it's also heavily overcast so the light would be far far softer than our previous scene. If there'd be much of it at all. And to top it off, the characters are wearing dark clothing, yet we have all these hard shadows everywhere, which you wouldn't really see, and in general the characters are, are fairly bright. Now this isn't an invalid approach because it is less technically correct, it's a pretty deliberate stylistic choice that favours detailed character art, but it does show the contrast in philosophy between the two directors of these two seasons. I guess one way to put it is that shading is used less to define volume with season 2 and more so to better match the lighting of whichever environment the characters are present in. It's a much more naturalistic approach and applied with the colour design gives a stronger sense of realism and with that a, a unique appeal in its own right. Like in this scene you have the shadow of the windowsill cast across Geto. Yeah the animator could have gone in and detailed this fold here and here, but by leaving it out and just focusing on those large shadow shapes, one it creates a more readable drawing, but most of all it makes him feel part of the environment. Again just like look how simple these shapes are, it's just this clean straight line down, uh, then Geto. The visual weight in this scene and many others throughout this season Season, is carried more through actual character animation than detailed stills, and that sense of volume comes more through the base drawings themselves, which is also very difficult to pull off. One of Naruto's character designers, Hirofumi Suzuki, is an artist that came to mind when it comes to very three-dimensional art drawn with few lines. The designs for Jin Ro, coincidentally by Tetsuya Nishio, another Naruto character designer and a close collaborator to Suzuki, is also a great example of volumetric drawings while having little shading and few lines. And interestingly enough, we've actually already seen a similar approach to the character art before in the openings for season 1, especially the second opening under Shingo Yamashita's direction, with simplified drawings and again a strong emphasis on distinct lighting and shadow over detailed character art. But yeah, that's the main stuff. If you like the video, you know, um, do the thing and check out Fandom Eon for some JJK merch. Wearing this will uh, get you places and use the code RELICS for a 10% discount. And of course, shout out to my patrons. But with that, thank you for watching and I'll see you later.